I'm a professional mathematician and we're going to master this integral together very intuitively, very quickly. My first thought is that the root x is the issue. If it's just sine of x, it's going to be super easy. So let's try to figure out how to handle the root x with a substitution. So we're going to call it a t substitution, not a u substitution, just using the letter t for convenience at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write t squared is equal to x, so that 2t dt is going to equal to dx. Okay. Now what I've done here is I've written t so that x is a function of t. So that way what we do is we find out dx in terms of t and dt. We don't have to see something in front of the dx and then try to leverage that to find the right substitution. We can just immediately write the dx in terms of t and dt. And of course we can write the root x as just going to be t. So we get the integral of sine of t times dx which is going to equal to 2t dt. Um, and that's pretty cool because now we've got the integral of 2 times the integral of t sine of t dt. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And now what we're going to do is you're going to have to use a trick which is integration by parts. Now, if you've seen it and you're a little unfamiliar with it, don't worry. I'm going to make this super intuitive. Integration by parts is really natural once you get the hang of it. And part of this is just to walk you through that. So we've got the integral of t times sine of t dt. How do I even know to do integration by parts? So I'll explain it in two steps. Number one is there isn't any obvious substitution. So we kind of see it's a product of two things. And those two things are going to have to satisfy an important property for integration by parts to work out. And what that property is, we're going to figure out by just quickly rederiving or recalling how parts works. Okay, so how parts works is basically if you take the integral of uv prime, um, you're just going to get uv, right? The integral and the derivative are inverses of each other. But by the product rule, the integral of uv prime is also going to equal to the integral of u prime v plus the integral of uv prime. Okay, so we've just used the product rule for the derivative of the product. And so therefore we get that uv minus the integral of u prime v is going to equal to the integral of uv prime. That's what integration by parts is. Now, the way I like to intuitively think about this is if we know this integral, we're going to know this integral. And what is the difference between this one and this one? Well, in this integral, we've got two parts u and v prime. We're going to differentiate the u and we're going to integrate the v prime to get v. And that's hopefully going to simplify our integral. So basically, when you have an integral that's a product of two things, differentiating one thing could make it simple. At the expense of integrating the other part, that shouldn't make it too complicated. And then you can do integration by parts. Because then you can find out what this quantity is, and therefore this difference, and therefore the original integral. So in our example here, we have t and sine t. The idea is, can we differentiate something and integrate the other thing to make it simpler? Now, if we try to, I'm going to show you a wrong approach first. If we try to integrate the t and differentiate the sine, well, the sine will become cosine. But the integrating the t is going to be t squared by 2, which is getting on the complicated side. We're getting a higher power of t, which we don't want. However, if you instead think we differentiate the t, because remember, if the t wasn't there, we just have a sine t, which is doable. So if we think about differentiating the t, so we're going to call this u, and integrating the sine t, which is just going to still keep it as a trig function. Okay, trig functions kind of cycle. So that's a nice property, and that happens a lot in integration by parts problems. So we've got u and v prime. So now what you do is you see that this integral, u v prime, well, basically, when you take u prime v, you're going to differentiate the t and integrate the sine t, and that's just going to be cosine or negative cosine t. Okay, so how that's going to work is, let's just write it out. So we've got u is equal to t, and we've got v prime is equal to sine of t. And now we can then write that u prime is equal to 1, and v is going to equal to negative of cosine of t. And so therefore, we can rewrite this integral. And don't forget the 2 times. Okay, So I'm, I'm not going to forget the 2 times. I'm going to put it here. So it's going to be 2 times. I can write it out in brackets. Um, and this is something just with working out to be very careful. Okay, Anyone can make mistakes. Just good to be careful. So the integral, um, so we've got u prime v. right? So we've got this formula here. So u v is going to be t times negative cosine t. So it's going to be negative t cosine t. And then we're going to subtract off the integral of u prime v. Okay, So the integral of u prime v is the integral of 1 times um, u prime v is negative cosine t. So it's going to be the integral of negative cosine t dt. And of course, what I'm going to do here is the negative I'm going to put out. That's a positive sign. And that's going to be our answer.
Okay, that's going to be our answer for our integral. And finally, we can actually split. We can get this cosine t out. So we can just say the integral of cosine t dt is just going to equal to sine of t dt or sine of t. <laughs> There's no dt, sine of t plus a constant. And that's going to be our answer for our integral. But of course, we have to now replace our t by our original substitution. t squared is x. So t is going to be the square root of x. So I'm just going to actually write this out right now here. I'm just going to erase this. All right, so let's write our final answer. It's super nice and super simple. So it's going to be negative 2 root x cosine of root x. And then it's going to be plus 2 times the sine of root x. And it's going to be plus a constant. Okay, so that's going to be our answer. And I'd like you to actually differentiate this just as practice. Check it gives that answer and play around with integration by parts. You know, try to do other problems, try to practice with it. I've got so much integration on my channel. You're going to love it. I've got an entire playlist of integration. You can find it on my channel homepage if you click the playlist tab. And another thing, I've got two videos for you. This one you're going to love. It's a super fun integral. There's another fun integral. Look okay, at two really great integrals. They're very quick, very simple. Check either of them out. I wish you an amazing day. And if you're consistently gaining value from my content, please consider liking and subscribing my videos. It makes a huge difference. It keeps you notified forever of all math content at all levels. My channel's on everything, not just integration, math across every level.